Hi, everyone. Let's learn about hypertension assessment with Pygmonic today. I'm going to play the Pygmonic video, and then at the end, we'll take the quiz together to see what we've learned. Remember hypertension assessment as the assess man cracking down on a chef with high blood pressure. Essential hypertension, shown by the espresso hiker BP, is idiopathic but may be linked to genetics, poor diet, or obesity. Whereas secondary hypertension, shown by the 2-2 hiker BP, is the result of a disease or medication. Assessment findings may include a headache shown by the hiker BP planting a flag in the chef, causing a head egg lump, vision changes shown by the delta signs, or a nosebleed, the chef's nose bleeding. Patients may experience chest pain shown by the chest pain bolts or syncope, the medical term for fainting shown by the sync of peas fainting. Diagnosis criteria include taking an average of two sets of readings, two minutes apart, shown by the two sets of BP cuffs with the 2-2 clock between, as well as having elevated blood pressure readings on two or more visits, shown by the second visitor sign-in. Nursing considerations include taking the BP in both arms, the BP cuffs on both arms, and keeping in mind that hypertension is common in African Americans. In summary, there are two types of hypertension, essential and secondary. Assessment findings for either may include a headache, vision changes, nosebleed, chest pain, and syncope. Diagnosis includes averaging two sets of readings two minutes apart and doing so over two or more visits. Take the BP in both arms and remember this condition is common in African Americans. All right, let's take the quiz. First question, which of the following groups of people are most commonly associated with hypertension? All right, if you need to take a minute to pause and um, go through the answer choices, you can. I remember this African-American pigmonic here, so common in African-Americans, my choice. And then in here, pigmonic says the African-American population is at the highest risk of developing hypertension. However, it's important to educate every patient on the risk factors for hypertension and what lifestyle changes need to take place to manage the risk factors. Next question. To properly diagnose non-urgent slash emergent hypertension, which is defined as an absence of cardiovascular risk factors and a BP of less than an 80 over 110, a patient needs to have elevated blood pressure readings after how many visits? All right. And from the answer choices there, I am going to select after two or more visits, I remember this pigmonic here. It even shows here. I remember him holding the sign of the two. So there you go. The second visit sign in. And pause if you need to to read the text there. And question number three, during your assessment of a patient with hypertension, which of the following is most likely to be seen? Okay, I remember the um, the chest and the lightning bolt. So I'm going to go with chest pain. And there it is. The increase in oxygen demand by the heart to beat harder can cause chest pain if the oxygen demands cannot be met. Okay, during your assessment of a patient with hypertension, which of the following is most likely to be seen? And I quickly remember the head and the egg, so I'm going to go with the headache. And there you go. During your assessment of a patient with hypertension, which of the following is most likely to be seen? Okay. And from these answer choices, I am going to go ahead and select syncope. I remember the sync of peas fainting over here, so let me check that. And there you go. Some patients that have hypertension will have a form of orthostatic blood pressure. This can cause a patient to faint or become dizzy upon standing. So much great info there by Pygmonic. There are still six more questions left on this quiz. So click the link below to check out Pygmonic so you can test yourself on the hypertension assessment process and with our spaced repetition quizzes. Thank you so much for learning with us today. Bye.